Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. This week we have something very special. We're going to be creating a blockchain for After Effects. Now this isn't going to be the typical blockchain with a coin associated that you can buy and sell or mine on the market, although it could be upgraded to do such a thing. This is basically going to be a blockchain to keep track of all of our renders going on, and it's going to contain data like how many seconds of video we rendered, the date it was rendered, and a few other things. And it's going to put all of this inside of a text document that has all of our information in JSON format. So we're going to be using our index, a timestamp of when it was created, the data, which is going to be how many seconds that were rendered, the previous hash, and the hash. Now for hashes, we're not going to actually be using SHA-256 or any of these other complicated algorithms. So it's not technically a foolproof blockchain because we're just going to be converting things to binary. But the basic way it's going to work is anytime we add a composition to the render queue, we can go ahead and select some presets here for it. Select an output location. And instead of clicking render in After Effects, we'll go ahead and use the script which over on the right side, you can see it tells us the current chain length is two and the appending is finished, which means it's added onto the blockchain. And now the render is complete. So if we go in to our blockchain text file, since we just started over from scratch, you can see we have our Genesis block, which contains basically no data. And then we have our rendered video, which we just did, which was 16.64 seconds. And it has some information about the hash, which will give us things like the index, the timestamp and the data. Now hopefully that's not too much to chew on for the introduction, but if you're not familiar with blockchains at all, they're basically the technology behind cryptocurrencies and other innovative things that allow you to securely store and transfer information. So because we're using binary instead of a hash function, this isn't going to be the most secure blockchain, but I just wanted to get the concept out there so you could see that it's possible in pretty much any language. So let's go ahead and get started with this. We'll create a new JavaScript file and we'll zoom in here a little bit. And I'm also going to change the size of our windows here. All right, to get started, I'm just going to call this render coin. Yes, I know it's not a coin, but it's just an easy name. We're also going to want to include JSON in this. So we'll type in hashtag include JSON2.js. And then although we're not supposed to use very many global variables in JavaScript, we're going to use two. The first one is going to be our blockchain location. And the second one is going to be called render coin. Our blockchain location is simply going to be the file path where we want to store the blockchain data in the text file that we saw. So for me, I'm just going to put this in my C drive and in a folder called render chain. And then render coins are going to have no value for now, but we're going to make this basically an object in a second. All right, so we could start with the UI but the UI is basically just a button. So let's go ahead and just start implementing the functionality of how this blockchain is going to work. So the first thing we need to realize is that inside of ExtendScript, we can't use classes or constructors. These are really common tools inside of programming languages that even work in standard JavaScript, but not this kind of JavaScript. And these are usually used to create blockchains. But since JavaScript extended doesn't support this, we're just going to find a way around it. So the first thing we're going to do is define a function called a block. And this is going to be what we use to create any new block inside of our blockchain. So we're just going to set this up like a normal function. And the arguments we're going to take are going to be the values inside of our block. So these are just going to be the index, the timestamp, the data we want inside of it, as well as the previous hash. And we're going to set this up just like we would if it were to be a class with a constructor. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to set this dot index equal to our index, this dot timestamp timestamp, this dot previous hash equal to previous hash, and then this dot hash, we're going to add another property inside of here. And this is going to be equal to a function we're going to define called calculate hash. And if you had a SHA-256 or X11, X17 algorithm, something of that sort, this is where you'd want to put it in to calculate your hash. So for the calculate hash function, we're going to pass a few values through. We're going to pass the index of this, this timestamp, and basically all the values we had up here, the data and the previous hash, and this dot previous hash. Now, just to recap this really quick, whenever we call block, 
we're going to be adding a new block, which we're going to push into render coin. So whenever we do add a block, we're going to need the index, which we're going to use a counter to keep track of, the timestamp, which will have a function to track, the data, which could be anything like how many seconds they're going to be rendering, how many frames they'll be rendering, or if it was sort of a blockchain as a coin, it would be how many coins they could receive. And then the previous hash is just going to be the hash of the previous function. If you're not sure what a hash is, I highly suggest you do some reading. And it's basically a way to encrypt data one way and make it very difficult to unencrypt that data. But again, since we're not going to be using any complicated hashing functions, this is going to be a bit different. Then, since we're just adding a new block, we're going to set the index of the current block equal to index, etc. Now we need to set up our calculate hash function. To do this, we're just going to go straight below all of this code, still inside of our block function. And we're going to define a function called calculate hash. And again, we're going to want to get in our arguments here. So index, timestamp, data, and previous hash. And then we're going to return something called hash algo. And this is going to be yet another function we're going to define. And this is going to be our custom hashing function, which is basically going to convert everything to binary, and it's going to return that value. So we're going to want to pass the same variables through here, the index, timestamp, the data, and the previous hash. Now there's a few things we want to change in these arguments, the first one being the timestamp. Because we're going to be converting these to binary, we want to make sure all of them are in an integer format. So because our timestamp is going to be a string, what we need to do is parse int. And that's still not going to do quite what we need, because if we say have the number three and then a slash, we need to make sure that slash is not in there because that will not make it an integer. So inside of our parentheses for parsing the integer, we're going to replace this type of slash and we want to replace it with just an empty space. And what that's going to do is remove the first slash in it. So if I actually just paste another one in here, if we replace it again, that's going to get rid of the slash between the day and the month and the month and the year. All right, so that's going to parse all of our data the way we want. So let's go ahead and define our actual hash algo. So function hash algo. And just like our calculate hash function, we're going to want our index, timestamp, the data, and the previous hash. And inside of here, it's going to be pretty simple how we do this. We're just going to create a variable called our hash data. And we'll set this equal to each one of our values. We're going to go to string and then to two. What this is going to do is take our index, convert it to a string in binary format. If you do two, it's binary. And you can also put in other values to get like a hexadecimal value. But we're just going to be using binary. So after our index to string, we're going to add a space. And then we'll say our timestamp dot to string to add a space, our data to a string to add a space. And finally, our previous hash to string in binary form. And then we're simply just going to return our hash data. All right, and the other thing we need to do is actually set up our functionality of our blockchain. So below our block function, we're going to create a second function called blockchain. And we don't need any arguments for this. We'll start off by saying this dot chain is equal to an empty array. And we'll also say this dot chain and we're going to push function called create genesis block. Now a genesis block is basically the initial block that is created on any given blockchain. Because we don't have the ability to mine in this blockchain, our genesis block is basically just going to contain a date, an index of zero, no data, and just a random hash we make up. So let's go ahead and create our genesis block function under here. Just say function create genesis block. No arguments to pass in here. And the simple way we're going to do this is we're going to return a new block. And this is going to create a new version of our block up here. So we need to get the index, the timestamp, the data and the previous hash. So for our arguments in our new block, we'll just say the index of zero because it's our first one. We'll go ahead and put in a date. So today is 4 14 2018. We'll put in the number of seconds we're going to be rendering, which again, zero. 
And then the previous hash, well, there is no previous hash because this is the very first block on our blockchain. So we'll just say zero as well. All right, so anytime we call the blockchain here, which we're gonna be setting equal to our render coin later, it's going to initially set the entire thing equal to nothing. So basically clear the blockchain, and then we're gonna create a Genesis block. All right, and there's pretty much one more function inside of the blockchain we need to add. If you look at the actual uh, included file, you can see that there's also one called get latest block and is chain valid. We're not gonna go over these in this current tutorial, but these are basically the bare bones to make sure that your blockchain is secure if you were to implement, say, a hashing function. So inside of our blockchain function, we're gonna go outside of our create genesis block function, and we're going to say blockchain.prototype.addBlock, and we're gonna set this equal to a function with the argument new block and we'll add our parentheses and our brackets. Now what this basically is saying is we're gonna be setting up a custom function for the blockchain object called add block. And this function is going to take in one argument called the new block. The reason we're doing this again is because we don't have constructors or classes in extend script. This is basically equivalent to one of those. So let's go ahead and put in the code we need in here. I actually made a mistake previously. I mentioned that we're not going to need the get latest block function. We're actually going to need that. So we'll say blockchain.prototype and we'll call this get latest block. And we'll set that equal to a function with no arguments. And inside of here, we're just going to return this.chain. So basically the current chain it's on and we're gonna say this.chain.length minus one. What this is going to do anytime we call get the latest block, it's going to go into our chain list, which starts off with our Genesis block, and at the current length, it's gonna be one. So if we take the length one minus one, we get index zero. So if we called get latest block, it would say this chain index zero, which is referring to our Genesis block. So it's basically just going to return the entire object for a Genesis block if we were initially to run this. So back inside our add block function, we're going to say new block dot previous hash is equal to this, which is gonna be this blockchain dot get latest block, which is a function we created and we wanna get the hash. So what this is gonna do is anytime we call add block, we're gonna be using new block as our argument and we're gonna call the previous hash that was inside of our new block and we're gonna set that equal to the previous blocks hash. And then now that we have our previous hash in our new block setup, we're just going to push this onto the blockchain. So we'll say this.chain and we'll push our new block. All right, so at this point, we can actually get our blockchain to work. It's not gonna write anything to files, but if we look over in our JavaScript console, which you can get to by going to window JavaScript console, we can go ahead and test it out real quick. What I'll do is I'll grab my variable called render coin, and I'm gonna set that equal to a new blockchain. So when we call this, it's going to go into the function blockchain and run all of the code basically setting up the initialization and creating our Genesis block. So if I were just to say write line and say render coin dot chain and index zero, this should reference the first block, which is going to be our Genesis block. So if I go ahead and play this here in extend script, we need to save our file and make sure JSON is in the same folder. Let's try that again. It looks like we forgot to end a parenthesis on our parse int as well. And we actually made a big mistake. Up in our block, we actually forgot to put in our data. So we need to say this.data equals data. So now if we go ahead and run it and write our render coin first index chain, you can see we get an object. So let's go ahead and see if we can grab the timestamp, which is 4.14.2018. So I'll say render coin dot chain index zero dot time stamp. And now if I run that, we can get the time that we rendered out this supposed Genesis block. All right, so now we know it's working. Now we can build a UI around it 
and make sure that every time we want to render something, we record all the information we need into this blockchain. So we actually don't need these two lines of code. These were just to make sure that everything was functioning properly. Now we can create our UI very quickly here. So just for reference, I'll go ahead and load it up here real quick. And we'll start off by making a window. So we'll say main window equals a new window. It'll be a palette window. We'll call it render coin blockchain. You could also just call it render blockchain. It's probably better. And we'll have it be undefined in size. Then we'll go ahead and grab the orientation and set it to column so it's top to bottom. And we're really only going to need one group for this. So we'll just say var group one equals our main window. And we're gonna add a group, undefined size, and we'll call it group one. And typically I set the orientation of groups to row, but this time because we just have the text here and the render button, I'm just going to make it a column as well. And it should go from top to bottom. Then we'll create a variable for our display text and we'll set this equal to group one and we're gonna add some static text undefined size and we'll just say something like please add item to render queue to add to the chain and then we'll create our button we'll just call it the render button which is also going to be equal to group one and this time we're going to add a button with undefined size and we'll just say render and we'll just say render and now we can say main window dot center and our main window we want to show it all right now if i go ahead and run the script you can see the ui looks fine very simple now the main thing we need to do is implement the functionality for when we click on the render button which basically needs to be anytime we have something in the render queue, we need to automatically grab the data we want from that composition, add it into our blockchain, write it to a file, render the video, delete it from the render queue, and prepare for any more incoming render queue items. So the basic functionality of the script is when we click on the render button. So we'll grab our render button and we'll say on click is equal to a function. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is check if there's any items inside of our render queue. If there aren't any items, we wanna tell the user to put something in there. And if there is items, then we want to do all the stuff I just mentioned. So the first thing we'll do is we'll say if and else. Inside of our if statement, we're going to say if check selected render queue item is less than one, and this is going to be a function. Then we're going to alert something like, please add an item to the render queue. And we'll return false to get outside of this function. So let's go ahead and set up our check selected render queue item function. Set it up there. And this is going to be very simple. What we're going to do is set up a variable inside of here called the counter set it equal to zero and set up a for loop. For our for loop, we're gonna say var i is equal to one. And while i is less than or equal to the current project we have open, we're gonna reference the render queue and the number of items inside the render queue, increment i by one. We're just going to increment counter as well every time we have an item. And then we're also going to want to return our counter. So if we call the check selected render queue item function, we're going to be returned the number of items in our render queue. If it's less than one, the user needs to add something. If it's not, we're going to say var blockchain file is equal to check blockchain. Now what this is, is going to be the actual text file we're writing our blockchain to. We're going to set this variable equal to a function called check blockchain. The reason we want to check our blockchain is we need to see if this file exists or doesn't exist. And then just to set up another function here real quick, we're gonna set up a variable called date and set that equal to get date. All right, so for our check blockchain function, we'll go ahead and set that up here, check blockchain. 
no arguments to pass through here. And we're going to set up the same variable that we had up here, blockchain file. It doesn't really matter because it's a local variable. And we're going to set this equal to a file. And inside of the file argument here, we need to set the path up. We're going to be using our blockchain location path we previously set up. So we'll say blockchain location. And we want to check if it has a text file in it called blockchain.txt. And we also add this slash here because it's inside of this folder here. Then we're going to check the blockchain file if it exists. And we actually want to check if it doesn't exist because if it exists, we don't really need to do anything because the blockchain file here is going to have this actual file referenced. If we check this location and there's no blockchain.txt file, it's not going to exist. So if that's the case, what we want to do is go ahead and grab our blockchain file and we're going to open it to write it. Even though it doesn't exist, if we go ahead and open it to write it, it's going to exist after that. So we'll say blockchain file open and then we'll say blockchain file equals a new file and it's going to be in our blockchain location and again plus blockchain.txt. And then of course we want to close our file to make sure we don't have any memory leaks or conflicts. And finally outside of checking if our blockchain file exists, we want to return our blockchain file itself, which if we go back up here, it's going to set this blockchain file variable equal to either the created one or the one that already existed in the folder. All right, and then for our get date function, go ahead and set that up. This function also will require no arguments, which is nice. And we're going to want to set it up in a specific way because we need to know how to parse this into an int properly. We just basically need to make sure that this has two slashes in it so that when we go back into our hashing algo up here, we can replace those slashes with nothing. So inside of our get date function, which believe me, if you're into crypto, getting a date is very difficult. We're going to set up a variable called new date. And this is going to be equal to a new date. And this is a JavaScript function that will basically reference your system's time settings and it will get the information that we need. So we're going to set up a few more variables, one called day, one called month, and one called year. For the day, we're going to reference our new date and use a function built into JavaScript called get date. Although we already created that up here, it's going to reference the get date function in JavaScript, which if I were to do that for today would give me the 14th because it's the 14th of April. For month, we're going to say something similar. We're going to grab our new date variable and use the function get month, which will return the month. And the year is a little bit different. We're going to reference our new date and call the function get full year. I believe if you use just get year, you'll get the last two digits. I'm not entirely sure. And then we're simply going to return and set up a little bit of math here to get the proper output we need, which is going to be in this format. So I like to do day, month, year. So what I'm going to do is say day plus a slash plus month plus a slash and plus year. And because I'm using that format, I should probably switch it up here as well. And now that should return the proper date we need. So now if we go back up in here, our blockchain file is now going to be set up. Whether it existed or not, it is now going to exist. And now we're also going to have a variable called date, which has the date in the proper format we need to parse it into our blockchain. Now we're going to set up something to check if there's any data inside of our blockchain text file. So we'll create a variable called chain data and we'll set this equal to a function we'll create called read blockchain. And inside of here, we're going to pass our blockchain file through. And now we'll go ahead and set up our function for reading the blockchain. So I'll create a function called read blockchain. And since we're passing our file through, I'll just go ahead and call it file through the argument. We'll set up a few variables, the first one being an array called data, and then one called current line, which we're going to be using to go through each line of our blockchain file. 
And then we'll grab our file and open it so that we can read it. And then we're going to run a while loop. So while it's not the end of our file. So basically while it's not at the end of the file, because we're going line by line, what we're going to want to do is set current line equal to our file. And we want to read the current line. Then we'll grab our data array and push the current line. This will fill up our data array with all of the information about each of our blocks, if of course they exist in the file. Then after our while loop, we're going to want to close up our file and return all of the data we just got. So now we've basically created a function that's going to go through, check if our blockchain file exists, and read any of the information that might be within it. But since we don't have any information inside of it yet, it's not going to do much. So down below our chain data information here, now what we're going to want to do is check if our render coin exists. So we'll say if render coin is equal to null, or if render coin is equal to undefined, just to have two checks here. What we're going to want to do is set render coin equal to a new blockchain. If you remember before, we sort of put that before where our UI currently is, but this is going to be a structured way uh, to basically every time you click on the render button to check if it exists or not. So if the user clicks on the render button and our blockchain doesn't exist yet, we want to create the blockchain. After we've double checked if our blockchain exists, we now want to add on to our blockchain. And what we're going to be adding is the information from our render queue item. So I'll call a function called append blockchain. And for those of you who don't know, append basically means to add on to the end of. And the arguments for our append blockchain function are going to be our date, which we got up here, our chain data, so any data that already existed in our blockchain, as well as our object called render coin. And then because we have a very simple function to set up after this called render item, I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. And that's just basically going to render out the video for us. But we need to go ahead and create our append blockchain function. So let's go down here, minimize some of these, and create a function called append blockchain. Want to make sure we have our arguments here. So we'll just say date data and render coin. Inside of here, the first thing we want to do is basically add a block to the blockchain. Because once we've gotten to the point of appending our blockchain, we've gone through and checked if a blockchain file exists, we've checked if there's any data in that file. So now we need to go ahead and add new data to the file. So I'm going to grab the render coin object. And I'm going to use the custom function we set up add block, which if you remember is up here, it basically uses the previous hash to get the hash of the new block, and then it's going to push a new block into the blockchain. So what I'm going to do inside of our add block, we need to pass through a couple of parameters. Remember that inside of our custom add block prototype, we need to pass through a new block object. So inside of here, we're going to say new block. And then if we remember, we have several parameters or arguments we need to pass through to create a new block. The first one is going to be the index. So I'm going to grab our render coin object, we're going to reference the blockchain. And then I'm going to grab our render coin and the length of the blockchain and subtract one from that. And then I'm going to grab its index and add one. So basically what this is saying is if we've just created our genesis block, the length of the blockchain is going to be one. So we're going to reference our render coin blockchain with the index referencing the length minus one. So it's basically going to say the first time through that we add a block, it's going to say our genesis block, we want that index, but we want to add one to it because it's after the genesis. So that's going to be just for our first parameter. Then we're going to bring in the date. And then for our data parameter, we can do really anything we want here. This can be an arbitrary integer or something specific referencing how much money or coins that the user should be paid for doing this. But since we're not really mining blocks here, we're just going to use the number of seconds that our item in the render queue is. So to get this information, we're going to reference app.project 
we're going to go into the render queue and we're going to grab the first item inside of it and grab the time span duration. And when we call that, it's going to return the number of seconds of our composition that's in the render queue. Then lastly, we need to bring in the previous hash. To do this, we're going to grab our render coin, reference the chain, and then say, for the index, we're going to grab our render coin and the length of our chain again, subtract one, and grab its hash. So what that's gonna do is just like before when we referenced this to our Genesis block, if this was the first time we were going through it, it's going to grab the hash of that, which is basically the previous hash. All right, so hopefully adding that block was not too complicated. We're going to grab our render coin object, use a custom function to add a block. When we add a block, we need to have a block object to pass through it. So we're gonna create a new block with some information referencing the previous block so that we can continue to link them together. All right, so now that we've added a block, we need to be able to write this new block information into our blockchain.txt file. So we're gonna create one more function here. We're gonna call it write blockchain. And the two informations we're gonna put through here as arguments are data and render coin. So down below, let's define our write blockchain function. Inside of here, we're just going to say data and render coin. Don't really need to change the names of the arguments or variables. We're going to set a variable up again called blockchain file. Again, it's a local variable, so it doesn't affect the other blockchain file variables. And set this equal to a file referencing our blockchain location plus our blockchain.txt file. Then, because I like to create an array and a current line variable for any time I'm reading or writing files, I'm going to say chain array is equal to an empty array, and then I'll have a variable for the current line because we're going through to read it line by line. And then we'll create a for loop. We're going to use a variable i equal to zero. And we're going to say for i is less than our render coin object, and we're going to reference the chain and the length of the chain. This is basically going to be the length of how many blocks we have. So if we just have the Genesis block, it's going to be a length of one. If we've added a couple blocks, it will be larger. And then increment i by one. Inside of here, we're simply going to grab our chain array and push some information in here. What we're gonna to wanna to push is our render coin and our current chain index. But what we want to do with this information, because it's going to be in an object format, it's gonna have an index, a timestamp, previous hash, data, and a hash. We wanna use JSON to get this data. So what we'll go ahead and say is JSON in all caps dot stringify, and we'll enclose that in our parentheses here. So what that's gonna do is basically grab each of our blocks, which is an object, including these properties here, and it's gonna convert it to a string so that we can write it to a file. And it's gonna do this for each one of our blocks as well. All right, so after our for loop, we wanna open up our blockchain file so we can write to it. So I'll say blockchain file dot open. We're opening it to write. We'll go ahead and set up the encoding here. We'll say blockchain file dot encoding. And we'll just say UTF-8. And then we're going to write the data. So I'll say blockchain file dot write. And the data we want to write to it is our chain array. And then finally, like usual, we want to close our blockchain file. All right, so there's one more thing we need to do before we can run this and make sure it's working. And that is our render item function here. So just to make sure we make it out of that function, I'm going to write a line after it saying render complete. So we'll create a function called render item. And inside of here, it's going to be very simple, just two lines of code. We're gonna say app.project.render queue, and we're going to render. And then we'll say app.project.render queue item one. So the first item in there, and we want to remove that. So this is assuming you really only have one item in the render queue that you wanna to add to the blockchain. 
uh, but it will render all of them if you have more and only remove the first. All right, so now I wanna make sure that this script is working properly. I'm gonna load up After Effects, a fresh one, and that's just to make sure that our blockchain isn't gonna be there. I'm gonna add this to a new composition, add it to the render queue, set up a format, run our script, and now I'll go ahead and click on Render. It says it's gonna overwrite something that exists, okay. If we look over an Extend script, we can see when it's done rendering. And as you can see, render complete, and it successfully removed the item out of here. So now if we go into our render chain folder and check out our blockchain.txt, you can see we have two things in here, the first of which is our genesis block, and the second one is our actual rendered item. So if we look at this, it's got an index of one. It, it was rendered on this date, which is actually a little bit off. It should be a four. The previous hash here references the genesis blocks hash, which we can actually convert from binary back into regular ASCII text to basically say this is the index, this is the timestamp in binary, this is the previous hash, and this is the current hash. So then in our data, you can see it's got 8.6. This is referencing how many seconds are in our composition that we rendered. And then it has the new hash of this, which has an index of one. This is our date in binary our previous hash as well as our data and hash all right guys that's going to do it for this tutorial i know it's been pretty complicated blockchain is not the easiest thing to understand and it definitely takes time and a lot of studying and practice to fully understand and again we're not really using hashing functions here to really secure our blockchain it would be very easy to perform a 51% or even more attack on this blockchain, but it's just for demonstration purposes and it's something that you could build on to create something interesting. As always, if you would like the video, be sure to hit the like button. Since this is a cryptocurrency somewhat video, if you want to donate to any of these coin addresses below, uh, feel free to. And of course, if you want to see more videos, be sure to leave a comment letting us know what video you want to see. And of course, subscribe and hit the bell button right next to it to be notified when new uploads come out. And we will see you guys next time.